Hallelujah. Well, I'm not going to take but a second. I've done this a lot of times, but I, I go back in memory. Many years ago, uh, I was preaching in, in Uganda. And um, actually, my son Taylor was with me, and we flew from Uganda to Tanzania uh, to meet. Uh, actually, I already met him, but to, to meet with Egan and Hannah. And Egan took me to a cornfield. I don't know why, but I, I, I still, it just can show you what God can do if you just let him. He had a dream to buy that cornfield. Now, we're not talking about a thousand acres. I don't know, is it five acres maybe, four acres? Not much, it's not that much. But um, how far, how much, Paul, you think, the, the church building? Huh? Four acres maybe, three or four acres. And uh, we stood in that cornfield and we just prayed together that God was going to raise up a, a, a conference center there and eventually a church there that could um, literally touch that whole area. And we just prayed. And I, I, I mean, the Holy Spirit just came on me so strong. And I, and I, I just knew we, we're going we're gonna to build this building. We're going to build this building. And so I just came back and told you guys, we're going to build this building. And it took a year, over a little over a year, or a little over a million dollars to pay, to pay to build it. But now that building holds conferences packed to the gills and people standing outside. I see it's like 3,000 people, and that's African. You wouldn't sit there for 10 minutes. No offense, but they sit there for hours looking in the windows, looking in the windows, listening. And, and it, it's, it's been an ama amazing impact on, on the, the city of Arusha. But I mean, people come from all over for these meetings that, that they have there. And we, we just got hooked up. I don't know how to put it other than that. And have been close friends ever since. And uh, we're so happy to have um, uh, Dr. Egan Falk and Hannah with us today. And, and uh, certainly we're friends of the, here of the ministry together. But, but uh, he's also awesome. He could preach to you in about four different languages today. I hope he preaches English. And I hope it's better than he, when he first came, which it is. <laughs> Come on, brother, Dr. Egan Fall, give him a hand. <laughs> hey, we, we just learned some things together, didn't we? <laughs> just grew together, learned together. <laughs> Love you. Love you too, Pastor. Oh, I messed up today. I don't know where to start. But I, I would like to start like this. I loved you all. And it's a pleasure, it's an honor to be in front of you. And to think about what God has done for all the years is really humbling for me and my wife. When I was a teenager, uh, I loved my granddad. He loved me. One day I was nearby. He was talking to another man in our church and they didn't know I was nearby. Then the man told my granddad, I believe there's a calling upon Egon's life to be a preacher. Then I heard my granddad say, no, 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 Egon will never preach. <laughs> granddad, it hurt me. It hurt me badly. He would never, 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 never say so if he knew I was nearby and listened to it. He didn't know. I don't know if I'm a good preacher or bad preacher. Anyhow, I don't care. As long as people are getting saved. And thousands and thousands of people are getting saved in Africa and all crusades. Thousands. Literally. And not you, but somebody else. Yeah, are you staying in the church? 
If you doubt, come and see it. That's the best answer. If you doubt it, just buy an air ticket, come and see it. The Africans will tell you they got saved in our, through our ministry. And you are involved. Because you, Pastor Sam and Miss Becky, and, uh, and this church has been pouring out millions of dollars into our ministry in Africa. Amazing. I'm just a fisherman's son from a small island in the Baltic Sea. Miss Becky, you messed me up honoring my wife. I'm so happy you, happy you did it because it means so much to her and to me. And I'm, normally I'm not crying, but today I'm crying. <laughs> Miss Becky, you made me cry. <laughs> but thank you anyhow. <laughs> it blessed me. It really blessed me. It means so much. So, so, so much. And Pastor Sam, he has the gift of, on picking on me. <laughs> and because it's a gift, I just receive it. <laughs> but when he's coming to Tanzania in December, <laughs> and he's staying in my house, and I know he always joined together with my wife against me, but <laughs> I'm so glad to see Debbie and Paul. All of you, I, I mean, uh, Paul, when I greeted him here in the front, you know, Paul, what he said to me? You know what he said to me? And here's my brother. He's my friend. Amen. He said, if you are not preaching good, I'm leaving. <laughs> so you better pray for me. And if you see him leaving, you know why. <laughs> God is so awesome. God is putting people together you never planned to be together. People you never know anything about. God orchestrated. It's such a blessing. So now I'm messed up, so I, 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 I don't know, I mean, I prepared myself and I don't know how to continue. But I, I think in, in order for me to gather myself, uh, I would like to show you a video. Uh, it's video number seven before we show it. Uh, it's about a month ago, just before we came over to the U.S., we had a crusade. Uh, in an area, they have been waiting for us for at least 30 years very close to the border of Rwanda and Burundi. And if you know a little bit of history of Rwanda and Burundi, two, two tribes are never able to live together. They kill each other. They, and it, it, it was spilling over to, the, in, into Tanzania and, uh, and um, it was dangerous. Now it's more peaceful, but even then, uh, the government didn't want anything bad happen to us. Uh, every day going to the crusade site and leaving the crusade site, we were guided by the police. But it's so amazing, even if you're in dangerous spots, you never feel fear. You might feel fear before you go, but when you are there, you, 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 I mean, I can't explain it by words, but it's only God. It's only God. And in that crusade, one day, one day, I didn't know because there were thousands and thousands of people, but one day a lady in the crowd, she, she got a phone call uh, and it told her, you have to come home now, your baby just died. What would you do? She ran, she didn't have a, a, a transportation, she ran home, found her baby dead, took the baby and ran back to the crusade site. And one of my guys, a former witch doctor, Paolo Mitanga, received this baby. Otherwise, maybe I wouldn't believe it. I don't know. I believe in God. I believe in miracles. But, but because Paolo Mitanga received the baby, he gave me that, the report. Then he said, we started to pray. We started to pray. Suddenly, that baby came back to life. It's only five, six weeks ago. I know the Bible is true. I know the promises is true. I know God is true. And God is able to do more than we ever thought about. So, you know, uh, um, 
Africans, I hope you understand me right, but Africans, they can dance. <laughs> they're, they're just born with it. You can see small babies, they hardly can't walk, but they can dance. <laughs> and they dance. And Africans, uh, they believe white men can't dance. <laughs> He's just trying. So in, in that crusade, we have visitors from U.S. and you might, uh, you might know some of them. <laughs> David Riles. And some other six, seven uh, other people. And one day when the crowd was dancing and worshiping and praising and jumping and they were dusty, I looked at the guys that did like this. Come on! Let us join! I want you to see it by yourself. White man can dance. <laughs> Number seven. I'm not going to dance for you. There it is. Look at Pastor Ryan. David. So today, I, I'm, I'm not going to preach. I will give you some words and I will mix it up with some videos. Uh, uh, today, I just want to give a report. After so many, many, many years, I don't know, past them, 30 years or even more, uh, we have been connected to each other. I, I think a missionary should give some reports. I think so. And I can, I, I can tell you a lot, of, uh, uh, and, but a video, I guess, it's telling much more. When I'm telling you we have thousands of people gathering in our crusades, you just saw it. You might think, think it's a city. No, it's not a city. You might think it's a town. It's not a town. It's just a small village. Nothing more. But people are coming from everywhere. Coming from all over. And even after 50 years, I'm so amazed. What is it drawing people to walk 10 miles, 20 miles? I had a group of people walking 100 miles. Sleeping behind my, 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 my stage for a whole week. Cooking their own food for a whole week. Monday morning when we were leaving, we were just passing by and said goodbye to them. They were so happy walking 100 miles home. At least I know in Denmark, nobody would be happy even to drive 100 miles. Something is drawing them. And I, it's not me because, or not, not my wife because we are white. It's because the gospel is alive. The gospel is the power of God. I want to repeat that. The, it's in the Bible. The gospel. The gospel. The good news. And the gospel is about a man. The son of the living God. The gospel is Jesus. If Jesus is not in the gospel, it's not the gospel. And the apostle Paul is very strict about it. He is telling us, if somebody else bring you a different gospel, curse them. I don't want to curse anyone. I'm cursing the devil. I'm cursing the demons. <laughs> Friday night we are talking about demons. To me, demons are real. In every crusade, every day, sometimes I get tired of demons. Why do they follow me all the time? Leave me alone. <laughs> but then I, I recognize maybe they are following me not because it's me, but because of the gospel. Jesus. Jesus. So, 50 years. I mean, we, we didn't know anything. We were... I mean, we were young, we were young, we were young. And some people would say they were stupid. I met Hannah the first time, 1st of August. Uh, it was a Sunday evening in 1965. She was 15, I was 17. And she changed my life. So don't blame me, blame her. 
I mean, I mean, I told my friends, if you are touching her, I'm not holy anymore. It was God. I believe God can put somebody together for life. For life. Hannah, I thank God she's not a preacher. I thank God oh, she can preach some. I thank God she don't want to preach. Because I want to preach. Then we would have a fight. But the quality of her ministry to me and the whole New Life Outreach is amazing. I couldn't do what I'm doing if I didn't have Hannah. That's the truth. That's the truth. I'm preaching. I'm going on crusades. She is following me. She is always together with me. She is, I mean, she is, she is cleaning after me. I mean, she's doing everything. She's cooking for me. I can't do anything. I'm spoiled. And please, baby, continue to spoil me. I like to be spoiled. She is always behind me when I'm preaching. Sometimes I look at her and I just feel that spirit. Go for it. Go big. Go big. The gospel is big. The gospel is powerful. Everything in the name is possible. The name of Jesus. Whosoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. So we arrived in 1974. We didn't know anything. I mean, we had to learn everything. And it was a different Tanzania at that time. It was difficult to get food. And we lost a lot of weight. I lost, I lost 40 pounds over a period of time. My wife, she was skinny, 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 skinny. I mean, it's good you have skin on bones, but if there's something underneath the skin, <laughs> it makes me happy. And then she got pregnant. That's amazing, you know, in a marriage, even you, you live in a dry place and everything is difficult and everything is hard. You can make your wife pregnant. It's biblical, by the way. As long as your wife. And I will never forget that day when she told me in the morning, we plan to travel quite far away to a mission hospital. We, we know, I mean, but that baby came a little bit early. So in the morning, Hannah told me, today you are not going far. I said, what? She said, today is the day. I didn't know anything about it, but she, of course she knew. And in late afternoon, I took her to a, a small bush. I call it a bush hospital. Maybe you wouldn't call it a hospital. And she gave birth to our youngest daughter. And her name is Gita, but I call her the bush baby. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I shouldn't take time to tell you, but, but she was the only white person. And every, every Tanzanian was in the window look at the white person and the white baby. <laughs> so the second day, my wife told me, take me home. <laughs> but God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. No one can, 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 um, can, it's not a guarantee on you can't force your children to believe in Jesus. And sometimes you put them in situations you wouldn't like to put them. But because God called you, you didn't have a choice. So as Ms. Becky said, we had to send them to Kenya to the Rift Valley Academy. And at that period, there was a, it, it wasn't good what went on. And there were some, some groups threatened to kill our children. So one night, the leaders of the school gathered all the children in, in a hall and put guards outside the building to protect our children. So I asked my bush baby when, when he came home, what did you do? She said, everybody was afraid. Everybody was crying. But dad, I wasn't. She was just a little teenager. I asked her, why? She said, I had Jesus. And I went around praying for everybody else and encouraged them and told them, they can't do us any harm. Oh, I have to move on now. 
We have 130 tribes. Tribes of different culture. One of the tribes is the Maasai tribe. People from all over the world come to see the Maasai tribe. I've seen it many times. Now we have a Maasai churches. They are different, different language, different uh, feelings, singing different, praying different, everything is different. And, and, and of course, before they, they got saved, they like to drink blood, blood from the cow. Drink it. So they cut the wean, wean, and blood is coming out, they put it in a container and mix it with blood, and then you drink it. And you can see in the eyes, it's demonic. And before they stop the bleeding, the guys are just drinking the blood coming out like dogs. And when they slaughter an animal, they don't slaughter, they, they, they strangle the animal, the cow. Because they want all the blood go down to the stomach. And then they open the stomach and they put their heads in the stomach and drinking the blood in the stomach. Disgusting. But those people Jesus died for. Those people Jesus loves. So, uh, a couple of months ago, Hannah and I went out to them and there's no roads, there's no tracks, there's nothing. They call it a village, but you can't see any village. But we gathered about 1,000 Maasai people for the weekend, preaching the gospel, teaching the word of God. The pastor, uh, Matthew, or Matthew, when he was a little boy, we never figured out why. He, he, he don't know why. But his mom took his feet and put them in the fire until the feet was gone. So why shouldn't we preach the gospel? If Jesus is the, is the answer, which he is, why shouldn't we go there given Jesus? It's a miracle, Matthew, he can stand on his feet. It's a miracle, he can walk. God called him to plant a church. He might not be qualified, but God made him to be qualified. He started under a tree. Many, many churches in Africa have started under a tree. Then people gathered, people got saved, the tree get, became too small. So he moved to another bigger tree. After a while, that big tree became too small. Then he built a, a, a church building of clay. I was so touched. I told them, I, when you're going to build a proper building, I will help you. I'm not going to build a building for you, but I want to help you. I want you to see and hear Maasai, people praying, crying out to God. Video number five. <laughs> So when I'm watching myself, this video, I ask myself the question, why should I love those people? Why should I? 
I'm from Europe. Why should I love them? The next question, how can I love them? I can't stop loving them. I think it must be God's calling upon our lives. I don't like to talk about uh, whatever we missed in our life because we moved from Europe to, to Africa. It's of no interest. I could tell you stories by stories by stories. To me, it's an honor to be allowed to bring them the gospel. And it's coming from the deepest of my heart. I wouldn't be able to love them. I mean, I hope you hear my heart. 50 years. And still love them. They're not angels. Some of them I really want to spank. <laughs> I'm even more than spank them. Sometimes, please forgive me, but I don't have another word. Sometimes I think, Lord, please. <laughs> but I, I, I figured out when God is calling you, something happens to your heart. And you can't stop it. So as the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 3, 13, we are running with passion, reaching the purpose. Passion. Passion. Don't get me wrong. I like motorbikes. But I know Paul Troquil, he has a passion for motorbikes. I know that because he posted it on Facebook. That's why I'm knowing it. And he honestly sometimes envy him. Because I love motorbikes. But motorbikes in Africa, no, 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 no. So when I see his posts posting his wonderful motorbikes, he's going on tour and brum, 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 brum. <laughs> he's killing my joy. <laughs> the passion. You don't just pick up the passion, that's impossible. Just to pick it up. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can go on a mission trip, and you should go on a mission trip and be a blessing, but many of you are glad when you go back home. I'm telling you the truth. We have done so many trips to Europe and US, and for four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, and every time we go home, Hannah says, tells me, I'm glad we are going home. And I'm glad she wants to go home. Nothing wrong. I mean, you treat us like kings. Absolutely. And we eat too much good food. And all that. You are so wonderful. But home is home. How, how can Africa be home without God calling us? Impossible. In the area where we are living, it was a Maasai area before. It's not a Maasai area anymore. Because the cornfield. The word of God, the ministry, the gospel changed everything. I remember one time I was, we, we were planning going to Zanzibar, not on a holiday, but preaching the gospel. So I, I was supposed to travel a couple of days before Hannah and she would follow. But I, in that time period, something bad happened in our area. People were killed. You could hear the screaming every night. Neighbors were killed and slaughtered. So one day I told Hannah, I think you should travel together with me and not stay alone at home. She looked at me, she said, I'm not afraid. As we planned, you go ahead, I will follow. I, I was a little bit, I mean, I care for my wife. I, I prayed. So when she joined me on the island of Zanzibar, which is Muslim island, and we were preaching the gospel, I asked her, what did, what did you experience? Then she told me, and I, I believe it because she told me, she saw angels in every corner of our area, every night, tall angels watching over her. If it's not biblical, don't believe me. But if it's biblical, you better believe me. And sometimes you might have angels watching over you, not because we are religious people, but God gives you angels watching over you. And I believe God is with us when we do what He called us to do. Running with passion, reaching the purpose. So now, 
I'm almost at the same age as Pastor Sam, but he's older than me. But he's still looking good. Then the thought is coming and people are asking, when are you going in for the landing? I mean, we have been on many uh, uh, flights and sometimes the landing can be a little bit tough. I like when it's smooth. And as a human being, I would love to have a smooth landing in my life and ministry. But God is messing everything up. (laughs) That's not the purpose, to have a smooth landing. I'm not done. We are not done. And we want, don't want to be done. Running with passion, reaching the purpose. Fasten your hearts to the future. The future. Don't lose the future. I mean, the struggle and the, the, all the evil in the world can make you be scared and you don't think you have a future. But let me use a picture. In Africa, I remember one time sitting in a hut, the pastor's hut, waiting for the food after the service. It became very dark. Then a lady of the house or the hut came in with a koroboy. Paul and Debbie know what the koroboy is. It's a homemade oil lamp. There's more smoke than light. I was young at that time. In my heart, I, mm, I, I told myself, that's all they can do. That's all they can do. I mean, you can't do anything better. But then the Holy Spirit stopped me. Don't be stupid. Look at that little light and just wait for the darkness to come. That little light with all that smoke is stronger than the darkest of the darkest of the darkest. <laughs> And the gospel of Jesus is that light. However dark it becomes in your life in the world, whatever is going on, the light of Jesus will shine brighter the more dark it becomes in the world. This is our time. This is our time. Right now, we should shine more than ever before, lifting up the name of Jesus and preaching the gospel. The greatest is still ahead of us. Running straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal. Do you want to go to heaven? If you're not born again, you go to hell. Please forgive me, but I'm an evangelist. That's in the Bible. Jesus is the He is the Savior. Not religion. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the door. Jesus is everything. Without Jesus in your life, I'm sorry, you are not going to heaven. Everyone wants to go to heaven. And when somebody dies, oh, my mom is just looking down at me, my dad is looking, were they saved? No, they are not looking down at you. They are not in heaven, they are not up there. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Don't be scared of the truth. The truth of the gospel of Jesus will set people free. Shine. Yes, we want to go to heaven, But if I ask you, do you want to go to heaven today? If you want to go to heaven today, lift your hand. Today. Uh Uh-uh. You want to go to heaven today? Right now? It means you have to die. I I know, I, I, I think I know you understand it because I want to go to heaven, but not yet. I'm still enjoying life. I'm enjoying my wife. I'm enjoying my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. I'm enjoying being a missionary. I'm enjoying preaching the gospel. I'm enjoying mud bugs in Louisiana. I'm not tired of life. I want to go to heaven, and I know I'm going to heaven. I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm not perfect, but I know I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I'm saved. I know my name is in the book of life in heaven. And I want to take as many as many as possible with me to heaven. Gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. I know my time is running so fast. <laughs> but several years back, I was in Denmark 
Denmark is a small country. It's, uh, the, the, the state church, the government church, the Lutheran church, any church outside the Lutheran church is a very small church. Our churches are very small. One day a, a Christian businessman called me. Uh, he wanted to see me in his office. Great businessman. And he asked me a lot of questions what we are doing in Africa. And he continued to ask questions about the preaching of the gospel, the crusades. He continued and continued and continued. Finally, he said, why are you having that many crusades? I said, that's easy to answer. He called me to preach the gospel. Number two, I'm enjoying it. You might be shocked, but I'm really enjoying it. I don't enjoy all the travels. I don't enjoy all the dust. There's a lot of things I don't enjoy. But when I'm there preaching the gospel to the people, I truly enjoy myself. Then he looked at me and said, now I understand. Because I would never hire people who don't enjoy working for me. And then he gave me 50,000 US dollars. Just because I'm telling him I'm enjoying preaching the gospel, it touched his heart. So he invested in preaching the gospel, gaining the victory prize. Oh my goodness, sometimes I'm dreaming about, sometimes I see it. I'm, I'm in the day we are going, going to heaven, walking on the streets of gold. Just try to imagine. We can't imagine. But try, just try to imagine it. How it will be. It will be awesome. It will be fantastic. I don't want to miss it. We might be small. In some people's eyes. But have you thought about. Small keys. Open big doors. Just a small key. Open a big door. For me and Hannah, the key is preaching the gospel. So, I would never have Bible school. Don't get me wrong, but I'm an evangelist. I mean, I love people. I love people. Thank God I'm not a pastor. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me. I thank God for pastors. We need pastors. We even need more pastors. But I've been, it's driving me crazy in preaching for the same people every week, every year. <laughs> Thank you for coming to church today. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but an evangelist wants to see it. people outside the church. We need people in the church, but as an evangelist, if you put an evangelist to guide the church preaching every Sunday, you have to be get saved every Sunday. I would never have Bible school. I would never have Bible school. I mean, Pastor Sammy has been pushing me many times. And I thank him today for pushing me. I've been a little bit stubborn. I repent. I do repent. Because my heart is preaching the gospel. So we started the, the Bible school with three students in an office. Don't ask me if I liked it. I liked the Bible school, but three students? Three students. And then some years later, Paul came. And I mean, he was building the Bible school and more people came to the Bible school and I could hear him preaching because it's very close to my house. He enjoyed it. He loved it. I mean, I can, I can, I teach in the Bible school for four days. That's more than enough for me. Let me go on a crusade. But those teachers, they don't want to go on a crusade. They want to dig in the Word of God and give the teaching to the, to the students. Three, four years ago, the minister in the government of education got graduated from our Bible school. Two years ago, one of the closest to the president of Tanzania got graduated from the Bible school. Closest, absolutely closest. Last year, the police chief of Arusha graduated from our Bible school. 
And I just saw it there. Not, not that I'm going to talk about security services. I mean, uh, you, you have those, uh, you have it in Tanzania as well. Several of those officers in the security service government have graduated from our Bible school. If we, if we don't change the society, I don't know who is changing the society. And I don't know even how it happened. I don't know how it happened. It just happened. Now our Bible school has 35 out campuses all over Tanzania. Even in Kenya and Uganda. As, and more is joining. Pastor Sam, this, I mean, I'm flooded. I'm flooded. India, Nepal, Pakistan, all of them want, want what we have. I would never be able to dream about it. I want, you to, I want you to see the video from last year's graduation, December. 856 pastors and preachers got graduated. It's the video number two, and then I will close down. Pastor Sam, you mentioned the cornfield. I think it was the early 90s or mid 90s. That's the building. That's the building. You ask me the question, I will never forget what is your vision? And uh, it was terrifying for me to uh, be asked by you, what is the vision? So uh, I gathered all my strengths to tell you what my vision was. And without you, the key opened that big door. Not just to a building. Buildings are important, but buildings are not going to heaven. But those ministers, they're going to heaven and they bring thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people to heaven. Never underestimate what God can do. Remember, when, remember you are just a portion of what you will be tomorrow. It's nothing about age. Go big. It's time to go big. It's time to take another step by faith. It's time to go on the water. Job 8, 7 says, Though thy beginning was small, yet the latter end should greatly increase. I'm speaking increase to this ministry today. I'm speaking increase to this church today. I'm speaking increase to you today. Whatever you are doing, you will be successful as you follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Finally, I would never go to, I would never go to, 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 to Pakistan. I've been invited to Pakistan at least for 30 years. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. This is a long story. I have to make it short. My time is over. But then one day, in you know, one of my crusades outside of Russia, in the morning we do a teaching seminar, there was sitting a, a man over there. He was not an African. He was not a European. I could see that by his skin. I didn't know him. When he had a break, I talked to him. Paul, you know John Israel. He came to Tanzania from Pakistan to be a missionary. It's a long story. But the Taliban wanted to kill him. So instead of being a refugee, he became a missionary. I think that's brilliant. The devil is so dumb. So dumb. 
So we, 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 we came into a, a relationship as, as brothers in Christ. And I mean, he was punching me all the time. You have to come to Pakistan. You have to come to Pakistan. You have to come to Pakistan. I said, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. God didn't call us to Pakistan. You have to come to Pakistan. You have to come to Pakistan. Shut up, shut up, shut up. You have to come to Pakistan. I mean, I mean it was ringing in my mind and my heart all the time. Every time I saw John, I know, I know John. Shut up, don't tell me. But last year I went to Pakistan. I went to Quetta. Nobody goes there because it's the most dangerous place in Pakistan. Next to the border of Afghanistan. More than 3,000 people got saved. <laughs> Healed. Demons cast out. I want to show that video. And then I'm done. I pray. That mission will be renewed. Go into another area, a greater area in the future for this church, but for every church in the United States of America. Because that's the future. When you are walking by night in Africa, you walk with a touch, torch. You don't point at your feet, but you point far away so you can see the way, so you don't, don't stumble. The gospel is the torch, the light for the world. Thank you so much and God bless us. Let's see the video from Pakistan. is a gap, but after prayer, he started to walk. This lady had stone in her kidneys and uh, she had severe pain, but she said when Dr. Avian prayed, she was totally healed. And she's happy now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, there's a there's a world out there. We we were uh, Wednesday night. We were talking about India. A billion people. A billion people. So, well, but we're, we're just a little church in Shreveport. No, that's not true. That's not true. We're a big church in Shreveport. And it doesn't matter about how many people. It's because we're going to, we're going to do our part to reach the world. And it's just like I, I've had this philosophy for, for years. I just act like nobody else is going to do it, so I have to do it. And we just do everything we can. Amen? Hallelujah. So, listen. Egan and Hannah, I can't explain to you the magnitude uh, 
of, of what they do. It's, it's amazing what God's opened doors for them to do. And um, the, the Bible school and, and the crusades and the church and all the things, they, they didn't even mention that they, um, uh, they have a school. How many kids in the school, Anna? How many? A thousand kids in a, in a school. And a lot of them, a lot of them, their parents, they, they don't have parents or they, they would have no education if it wasn't for this. And um, in fact, I don't know how long, we, I guess since the school started, Becky and I have sponsored uh, three kids uh, till they graduated and then started sponsoring somebody else. Um, I think two or three, I can't remember. Uh, uh, kids in, in the orphanage. So, uh, and it's not an orphanage, it's a school. I mean, if you go there, it is a school. You, it, it's amazing what God's done just to build the school. So <clears throat> they're, they're, it's just a phenomenal work. And thank God we're a part of it. Amen. Amen. And we're, we're, we're going to do our part. So I want to receive an offering uh, for, <clears throat> for Egan and Hannah today. And uh, maybe you already have it ready. If you don't, uh, get you an offering envelope. There's a place on the envelope. Don't put it in missions. It says special. Put it right there. Say, so, well, I didn't come uh, ready. Well, go online. I did it before I came and, and gave an offering online before I came today. Uh, and I, I just want to ask you to do something. Stretch out your faith in your giving. M this is a personal observation from me. I have found out that I receive more blessing when I give to missions than any other place. I mean, we, we, we give to the, you know, the building, you know, and we give to, you know, just re our regular tithes and offerings. But, but there's something different about missions. So I, I, I want to encourage you today uh, to do something. And again, I understand maybe, you know, you didn't come prepared, but, but go online and today or get on the app and, and um, do something special because we're going to bless them. Amen. I said, we're going to bless them. How many of you enjoyed that? That one crusade you saw, how many do you do a year, Egan? Eight a, eight a year, and they're all just like that, if not bigger. And they're, they're, they're not in, they're not in, if you can understand, they're not in cities. And people come for miles and miles and miles, never heard the gospel, never heard the gospel. So I want to encourage you today to do something. So if you're giving today, I'm going to ask the ushers to go ahead and come and, and get ready. Um, I'm going to pray over you today. And, you, you, and even, if, even if it's, you know, Wednesday or next Sunday, we'll still, we're going we're gonna to make sure we're going to take care of them. But let me just pray. Are y'all moving around like you're going to do something? It looks like you're just kind of sitting there waiting to leave. You're in a hurry. It's just 20 minutes to 12. My goodness. Father, I just thank you right now for the privilege of being able to participate in the gospel around the world. And Lord, I'm stirred in my spirit that now is the time. Now is the time to do more and to stretch out further because the world is hurting. Evil is trying to overcome, but we know it can't. And Lord, I just thank you as we give today. Thank you, Father, you said that you would work in our lives supernaturally back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Well, after that, containers pass you by. You can stand up. I didn't say you could leave. You can just, you can stand up. Stretch your legs a minute. Hallelujah. Did y'all enjoy that today? Wasn't that awesome? I, 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 I know only in a sense the Holy Spirit can really stir your hearts to missions and to really motivate you. 
But I want to tell you one thing that'll motivate you to missions if you went on a missions trip. Yeah, you say, well, 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 where? I don't know. We've got lots of places you could go. And no, Hawaii's not one of them. I, I was hoping that's where the Lord would send me, but he sent me back to Shreveport. Amen. But, that, but you can be affected by a mission trip. Uh, Rob and Julie right now are in Costa Rica ministering to ministers in Costa Rica uh, uh, while, while we're speaking this, uh, this week. Uh, we believe in reaching the world. Amen. We believe in reaching the world. Father, thank you for this time together today. Thank you for stirring our hearts. And Lord, I pray that we go with a renewed desire to touch the world in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Turn around and hug somebody. Tell them that you love them. You're dismissed.